Hopefully, this will be just a quick little lesson on bar graphs, line graphs, and scatter plots. So, bar graphs can either be vertical or horizontal, and they compare data. So you can see, depending on what I would tell you these are, um, and notice that the bottom, the horizontal part of the graph is known as the x-coordinate, and the vertical is known as the y. And keep that in mind because later we're gonna get into uh, coordinate grids and functions, and all of this will stay the same. So horizontally, it's always the x-coordinate, and vertically, it's always the Y. So you just don't see the X and Ys on these things. All right, so they compare data. It is very easy to look at this. And if I said, okay, you know, these are people's names, you know, Sally, Bill, John, and Susie. And I said, who had the most of something? You can immediately look at it and tell me it was Susie. So that's the benefit of these. They're easy to compare data just by looking at it. Okay, notice also that these bars are separated. None of them are touching each other because later we'll talk about a histogram or a histograph and they are actually touching each other. So um, each of these are separate entities entirely. Okay, what I wanted to mention over here and you can barely see it, but this little emblem, this is an important little emblem. Sometimes you will see it down at the bottom of a graph. Sometimes you may not. But the reason you might see it is if they're telling you something is missing in this section. And what I want you to look at is the way I have my graph numbered. The bottom we typically think of as the zero point. And so as I'm going up, you can see that my first hash mark is the number 100. But my next hash mark is the number 150 and then 200 and 250. Well, but look at my hash marks. This one from the zero to the 100 is the same measurement as the 100 to the 50. But this is actually 100 points difference. This is only 50 points different. So real, visually, they should look different, but they don't. So be aware, sometimes you'll see this and it's gonna tell you that something is missing. Like maybe they didn't make it um, proportionate. But more important than this, pay attention to your numbers and make sure that these things would be proportionate because if I were to ask you the question, these are A, B, C, D, going from left to right. If I were to ask you the question, which two uh, are, one is half of the other? Well, you might look at it and you go, okay, if you're not looking at the numbers over here and all you're looking at is the picture, you might say that the A is half of the B. But if you look at the numbers, A is 100 and B is 150. Well, that is definitely 100 is not half of 150. But if I were to draw the rest of my graph the way it should have been drawn, showing you that I have another, um, you know, that this, this measurement right here is off, then it looks like A um, isn't so much as half a B. A looks like about two thirds as much of B. And so then what you can do and what you should do is you should be in the habit of looking at the numbers. So if I had 100, something that's twice as big as 100 would be this 200. So I could have A and C be A is half of the letter C. And then if this one over here is 250, is anything half of that? No, nothing in my chart is half of 250. So just be aware of that. Pay close attention to the titles. Pay close attention to what these numbers or words at the bottom mean. So um, be very diligent about reading and paying attention to details. Okay, line graphs show how data changes over time. So for instance, in this particular thing, I'm showing months down at the bottom. I am showing uh, numbers going up on the Y coordinate. And so um, I have these two separate, um, oh, I've got a little triangle shape and a little circular shape, two separate icons that are representing of two different 
either places or people or things, they'll tell you what those represent. Well, in this case, I might ask you, which month has the greatest spread between these two icons? And you might be tempted to um, be looking at the circles, but I'm not asking for the distance between the black circles. I'm asking for the distance between the blue triangle and the black circle. So then you need to go over and look at your numbers on the side, and I can see that the difference from where the blue circle is sitting at the number five and this circle in April is sitting at the number three. So that's a difference of two. But if I go over here to where this one looks a little bit visually bigger, my triangle here is sitting at the number one and the black circle here is sitting at the number four. And if I find the difference, I've got three spaces. So this is the greater distance. So I would answer that the month of July shows a bigger distance. Because if you look at these other two things, this is maybe only one space difference, and this one is as well, maybe even one and a half, okay? If we go down to the scatter plots, they show how one set of data can affect another. So for instance, this is age down here at the bottom, and this is money in thousands of dollars. And this, the title of it is important. It says yearly earnings. So we can see how a person's age, as we get older, how it affects our <coughs> ability to um, make money. When a person is very young, typically the data shows that they don't make as much money. If you're under 25, you're down here in the 20,000 to maybe even just barely 30,000 range, okay, $30,000. But as we get older, we get to say 55, and some folks in the 55 are down here at $50,000, but some of them are up above $80,000. You can see a direct correlation that the older we get, the typically the more money we can make. Now, this is what we call a positive relationship, a positive growth, even a positive slope. That's something we'll talk about later on when we're actually dealing with straight lines. But this is a positive relationship because it is going uphill. If we had a graph that the high data was up here on the y-axis, it starts up here and then goes down, we're going downhill, that would be a negative correlation or a negative relationship. So keep that in mind. Going uphill is positive, going downhill is negative.